Welcome to the Inside Tax Show, everybody. We're back after six months and a lot has happened. That is an understatement. Uh, we have our regular crew alongside us. We've got Jim, Ben and Dave with us today. And we're also joined with Toto Wolf and James Allison uh, here too. You may have noticed that we are not by our usual location, by the sea. Oh, no. We have uh, moved. We find ourselves in landlocked Brackley instead at the home of the most successful Formula One team of all time, Mercedes AMG F1 team. What you may be asking is happening. Here's your answer. The America's Cup is the ultimate team sport. To win, we have to assemble a world-class team. Every single team member from design, build, sailing, support is reliant on one another to get the best possible performance from the boat. We're taking on teams with over 25 years of experience. We're entering our third consecutive British challenge, bringing with us the continuity needed for success. We have a team that can handle adversity and that knows how to fight back learning from the hard-fought lessons of our previous campaigns. Trouble for Ineos Team UK. Our approach will be rigorous, fusing together the talent and creativity from Formula One and the America's Cup. Collaboration will be key. Mercedes AMG F1 Applied Science bring a legacy of design and continuity. They're proven winners. It's in their DNA. It's in their culture. Together we will take on one of sport's most technical challenges, inspiring a future generation of problem solvers, whilst providing a pathway for inclusion and diversity in our sport. The team are ready to take on the challenge. OK, let's put a little bit more flesh on the bones and uh, talk to the team about exactly why we're here. Jim, let's start with you. You're here. You haven't run for the hills. You're still with us. That's mm. wonderful news. Mm. Um, tell us about this unique sporting mm. partnership that we have here and, and why it's so important to you to fuse your uh, Ineos sports teams together, and this one in particular. Well, I think <clears throat> Formula One and the America's Cup, they share this common theme where you need to be excellent in the sport and the technology. And not many sports really share that sort of hybrid um, thing. Um, and the, obviously the Mercedes guys on my left here, they've, they're the, probably the most successful Formula One team there's ever been. Um, and that's a combination of you know, good drivers, but wonderful technology. I mean, they've had a car that's capable of winning. And it's the same, it's the same challenge in the America's Cup, really. I don't, I don't think the Brits have ever arrived at a, uh, an America's Cup with a, with a boat that probably could have won, even though we've had some fantastic sailors. So, and our boat that we had for the, you know, the AC-36, it wasn't capable of winning. Technically, it wasn't quite good enough. I mean, we learned lots of lessons, but um, I think the, the combination of you know, the, the technical expertise that Mercedes have, Mercedes Formula One team have, together with Ben and his team, I think is, you know, has the prospect of being quite exciting. You may not want to go back there, but I'm going to take you back there anyway to the last cup, mm. the last edition of this America's Cup campaign. <clears throat> um, how did you find it? It was a bit of a baptism of fire. Um, how, how did you find the cup campaign? It had highs, it had lows, it had a little bit of everything. Um, what are your memories from that time? Oh, well, I, all the memories are, you know, are wonderful, really, because it is, it is a wonderful event. Um, but it, it's also an event that you need to immerse yourself in a little bit because it's very exciting. There's lots of thrills and spills, particularly on foils, because you've got this six-ton vessel travelling at almost 100 kilometres an hour, and they're, they're, they're clearly, even, even if you're as good as Ben, they're clearly quite difficult to control. So, it, you know, it's exciting. But also, as you, it, there are many subtleties, and it, it takes time to... You know, it's, you know, it's a high-quality sport. We, we, a bit like Formula One, you know, there are many subtleties in Formula One, which is why you sort of get captivated by it. It's sort of the opposite of 10-pin bowling. <laughs> five minutes, you've had enough. You know, these, they, you, know you, you can stay interested for a long time. So I, I, I got quite absorbed in the tactics and the strategy and all the technical issues that they were facing and, uh, and the excitement of it. Ben, it's so not often that you get to fuse different sports and different top professionals at their, at their levels of their own sport as well together. I mean, this is a really unique opportunity, isn't it? Being 
paired and partnered with a group of sports people that know how to achieve things as you do? Oh, it's an incredible opportunity for us. I'm mean, going to have to say a huge thank you to Toto and James and, and Jeff and the rest of the team here. When you come to this side at Brackley, it's hugely impressive. And certainly now we've been working with the team here, what, what three or four months. And the, the, the discipline that you, you feel um, as you come in and, and work with the guy, it's, it, it's, um, it's infectious, really. So I think for our organization, that collaboration, taking it to the next level, which ultimately we need to do if we're going to take on the mighty Kiwis, you know, the All Blacks of sailing, um, that's, the sort of, uh, that's the sort of focus and attention that we need. Uh, we've lost some faces, we've gained some faces. What does the new look team look like? Yeah, that's right. Inevitably, uh, you know, you move forwards. Um, some people, you know, sadly uh, don't come on, on the journey with us, but we brought in uh, some, some fresh new talent as well. Um, on the design side, we've got, uh, you know, Martin Fisher, for example, who's come across from Luna Rosa. He's one of the top naval architects in the world. Um, Nat Shaver, who's one of the sort of superstar foil designers in, in America's Cup world. Um, and on the sailing side as well, it's early days. We're still finalizing the protocol with Team New Zealand, and the deadline for that is mid-November, and both teams are pushing hard for that. Um, but it's not really until we get those rules fixed, um, as it is for all of the other teams, um, that we can really finalize those plans and push forwards. Toto, have you been long harboring a desire to be involved in the Cup world? I mean, how on earth did this come about? Yeah, I'm asking that myself uh, <laughs> until today. I guess the troublemaker sits here, uh, Jim. Um, no, we share, I always um, share the passion for um, engineering. And there's not a lot of difference between putting the best, trying to put the best car on the, on, on the road and, and racing others um, than Formula One on water. And uh, that is the America's Cup. And we uh, slowly merged into the project um, pretty late into the last campaign, but we loved it. Um, I could see the buzz within the organization that people started to follow America's Cup and took it quite, um, or, or embraced it as our own project. And now we're doing it properly next time around. And I think we have the same mindset. It's about trying to do the best possible job, uh, hopefully good enough to, um, to be right there. Um, ben talked in that uh, piece of uh, video about winning being in your DNA. It's not always been the case. I mean, how do you build a successful team and then keep them there right at the top? Um, I think the most important is to stay humble and, um, and, and be able to really um, have, a, have a mindset of being able to criticize yourself. Mm. When you listen to one of our debriefs Monday morning after a race that we have been uh, lucky enough to win, it, it doesn't sound like this was the team that won because we are, all, we are always skeptical about our own achievement. We all suffer in a way from an imposter syndrome um, the people must be really good in this team to have uh, um, made us win because I don't know really what my contribution was. <laughs> uh, and that goes all through the organization. Everybody feels that, even the most highly skilled um, engineers. And I think that keeps us grounded. And every year we, we see ourselves um, not as the one to beat, but in a way there is this challenger mentality. There's, we, we, we set the expectations in the right way and we feel zero sense of entitlement. Um, you've been very generous. You've effectively given Ben James, sort of. You've loaned him out. How, do, how does that work? How does that dynamic pair out? Yeah, it's, it comes from the ambition to be successful in America's Cup. Um, James has been a technical director in the team for a long time, has obviously um, devel um, uh, developed an organization with his team that, that was able to you know, keep, keep on the top. And Jameson has moved into the into a next role, which is overseeing all of the technical organization um, here in Brackley. He is a sparring partner from, for the guys in, in HPP who, who do the engines, and a similar role um, will be within the America's Cup structure with all his expertise as a technical director um, in, in Mercedes Formula One. James, how's it been going so far? Well, <laughs> you, like, you like this bunch of sailors? It's, well, it's been really, really... <laughs> Interesting and exciting so far. I think it's interesting that Toto used the word humble uh, at, at the first thing about uh, what, what has been important here in, in Brackley. And, and when people talk about America's Cup being like Formula One on water, the, the, 
I think most people are immediately thinking, well, it's a bit hydrodynamic, it's a bit aerodynamic, it's, it's, uh, it's technological, it's all of those things. But actually, the most striking comparison to me is that it's difficult. And the, the way in which it's worked okay for us in F1 is having the humility to admit that it's difficult, that your, your competitors will eat you up if for one moment you stop remembering that it's difficult and this challenge, this challenge is proper difficult. <laughs> and uh, and, and, yeah, we know. and, and uh, really exciting that, that there's a team of experienced America's Cup engineers that are absolutely at the heart of what we're doing, uh, uh, who Ben and Dave have brought, brought to bear on this project. And, and Mercedes are bringing our own engineers to it as well, uh, all of them capable, skillful engineers who hopefully, working with people who've done this cup before and understand it, working together, we actually create something pretty special, good enough for this really difficult challenge. Yeah, are you going to aim for sort of one big happy family here? Because there's going to be a lot of voices, you know, lending, lending their thing, aren't they? Their, well, their own voice. It's, that too has been interesting, because as we, in the opening weeks, months of getting this group of people together, we talk about, oh, well, there's the people from the MGP side, yeah. there's the people from the, uh, from the INEOS side, and the, the longer that we have sort of been in bed with one another, trying to make all this knit together, the more, it, the more we all wish to talk about the fact that this is the INEOS Britannia team, that we are at the beginning of a brilliantly exciting campaign, uh, that the, 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 the time as ever in these campaigns is short, and that we, the INEOS Britannia team, are the ones that are doing it. And that sense of happy family is the one that we wish to construct and, and nurture throughout it. You obviously contributed in the last campaign, but does this feel altogether different? Does this feel like a different setup? Does it feel like it's sort of graduated to a whole other place now? Uh, well, yeah, I think last time round there were, Tota mentioned that the people in the factory got engaged because we had some of our own down, down in Portsmouth working on, on the boat, and then eventually when it was racing, it, there were some people actually out there in Auckland. Um, but it was, a, it was uh, we were brought in to be sort of capable bodies to sort of put their shoulder to the wheel, uh, but we didn't have any, any real part in, in, the, in the strategy or the thinking behind it. We were just, we were just involved trying to help. And uh, this time round, we are all, as you say, one big, <laughs> one big team trying to make sure that we put something competitive together. And so the, it does feel different because, because the, we've got a lot of skin in it. Mm. And, uh, and we, we would desperately wish to, to be um, making sure we're pulling our weight in that happy family and, uh, and creating something that can be competitive when it comes to race time. All these very clever people all in one room mulling over different ideas. Ben, talking of clever people, what about a new lead designer as well? Because we've got one on board. Yeah, Martin, as, a, as mentioned, Martin Fisher. Um, who, who's, who's come and joined us. He's got great experience in, in America's Cup and naval architecture. Um, but as James said, it's that mixture. You know, we've got um, you know, a great team from, from you know, two campaigns now, uh, many of whom have come, come through and merging that with uh, the team here at, at Mercedes F1. That, that's really the, the key to getting the, the, the resource that we need, ultimately, that, that sort of... Um, Ultimately, the, the, the sailing design mindset um, and marrying that with the, with the discipline and the approach that Formula One, uh, you know, I think that the continuity that Formula One mm. has as well, I think really helps to build the organization as, as these guys have. Uh, so if we can, uh, in effect, piggyback onto that um, with our, our sailing design know-how that we hope, uh, well, we want to build the, the, the best team to get the job done. I say it's been a busy six months. I mean, Dave Ending sat here in the middle, hasn't sat down until now, have you? You've been very, very busy. What's been going on? What's been happening? You're now um, COO. Yeah, uh, a few changes along the way. Uh, well, I mean, we, we stopped pretty firmly in Auckland um, and there was a bit of a regroup and, and took stock of where things were, obviously. Um, I guess you've got to be careful not to make rash decisions um, going from one program to the next. And, and now we're trying to rebuild this group and, and make sure we get the right people involved, um, working with the Mercedes team on, on who those skill sets need to be and where we apply 
you know, more focused this time looking forward. So um, it's been a bit of a recruiting exercise, um, which is a little bit tough when you know, the variables, there's still a lot of variables in terms of venue and timing and, and bits and pieces. So it's, um, it's hard to engage some people at times, but, uh, and, and then the people that are here give them some sort of structure and, and planning for their next three or four years of their life. There's so much still to determine, isn't there, in cut world? Um, so w what are you talking about right now? What are you chatting about right now behind all the closed doors and, you know, to try and determine how you're going to lead this team forward? Well, well in internally, of course, we're trying to plan, but like all of the teams, we need the protocol. Um, so that's something that's on us as a challenger of record to negotiate that with the Defenders Team New Zealand. We're doing that. Um, I wouldn't say either team has, it, has, you know, has an understanding now what those rules look like. Um, so we need to get that finalized by mid-November, which is the target. I think we're on track to do that. But until then, you know, we are trying to build the, the right organization, understand where people fit. Um, but we need those specific rules to be able to sort of charge ahead, if you like. And that's the same for all the other teams. So we want to make sure that um, everybody gets those, those rules, those regulations as soon as they can so that we can all push forward. How has working with Mercedes affected sort of the cultural change with the team as well? I mean, has, has there been sort of, is there... Is it, I'm not going to say it wasn't a professional unit before, but is it suddenly ramped up a whole gear because you're working with these guys who've been operating at the sharp end for so many years? Well, like I said, it, it, you know, that continuity that F1 has, so the professionalism, the, the, the discipline that you see when you come into this organisation, um, I think that's something, because America's Cup is very stop-start, um, and so it takes a long time to rebuild um, your work practices and, and your intellectual property and so on. Um, so for us now... Uh, this is our third go-round as a team, so we, we are building up that intellectual property. Um, but be a, to be able to tie into this team and those working practices and the efficiency that that brings, that's a big, big step forward for us. Jim, one of the things that you said at the beginning of the last campaign was we'll sort of set out on this mission. The most important thing is to give Ben a boat he can win in, yeah. which we didn't manage to do last time. So how important is it to not be on the back foot again this time as we head into the next campaign? Well, I think it's... <clears throat> I think what, <clears throat> what we learned in New Zealand is that we had uh, a sailing team that was capable of winning the America's mm. Cup, because I think Ben, uh, I don't want to spare your blushes, but, you know, he did a super job. Basically, which it is not. We've got, we've got a squad of sailors on there. We've got Giles, Giles yeah. who's... No, but anyway, you, Ben and, yeah. and your yeah. team, there were 11 of you on the boat. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but the boat wasn't good enough. So, I mean, we, if we don't, we don't have a boat on the start line that's capable of winning, then we won't win. Um, it's like putting Lewis in a slow car. He might be a very, very good driver, but he isn't going to win in a slow car in, in Formula 1. It's no difference to that. But having a fast boat is no guarantee of winning because <clears throat> then it's down to a sport and there are all sorts of uncertainties in sport. All sorts of uncertainties. So the, the objective, really, of the team is to get to the start line with a boat that has the potential of winning. And, James, looking at the Cup last time, were you watching it as an observer thinking, oh, I know where we can affect the changes here, I know where we can make a difference? I mean, was that part of, part of the thinking at that point that led you to ultimately all say, yes, let's do this together? I, I think um, that would overstate my level of knowledge of, of all the subtlety and detail of the Cup, which is growing all the time for me. Um, but but last, last time round, we knew because we'd... Been a we'd been involved to some degree. We knew of some of the difficulties that the team had endured. Uh, we could see, um, and indeed were involved in trying to um, reduce some of those difficulties and try to help the, the boat to become more competitive. But we knew that, that fixing some of them would have involved a time machine. We would have had to go back a bit earlier, uh, make a few decisions differently at the start of the campaign, and then it, it could have run in a different direction. And, and so we find ourselves now at the beginning of a fresh one with the combined learning of, of, uh, of, of uh, the INEOS team uh, and the part that we played in, in the previous one and what we saw, uh, coupled with all the people who've joined us from other campaigns for this one. And we're trying to combine it to make sure that all our knowledge is pooled at the beginning so that we don't wish we had a time machine two years from now. Uh, but that we, we feel like we stepped through uh, this complicated design space in a good way to bring that boat that Jim talks about, the boat good enough to give Ben and the other sailors a chance to win. And there are, there are a lot of common 
sort of skill sets, technical aspects to a Formula One car and America's Cup boat? Because you've got wings, the boat's got foils. I mean, you know, one, one's in water, one's in air, but basically it's, you know, it's hydrodynamics, it's aerodynamics. You've, you've got the whole aerodynamic aspect of the stuff that's out of the water. You've got all the systems things. I mean, they're all things which you get in the Formula One car. Yeah, there's, there's you know, many, got, got there's skill many set. F1 skill sets that would lift directly into America's Cup and vice versa. People who could come from America's Cup and hold down a job in F1, no problem. Yep. And then there's areas which are, are, are specific to boats that are things that we need to learn about. So which are the bits do you find the most challenging? Which are the bits that you think, right, we've really got to dive um, in on that, well, know more about it? It's uh, it, the, the fine detail of things like the hydrodynamics uh, on the foils, that is, uh, that is, uh, <clears throat> Formula One cars are very, very detailed in terms of how many things there are on them, lots and lots of vortex shedding structures that all interact nicely with one another. Um, and by comparison, you could look at the hydro, hydrofoil of an America's Cup boat and say, well, that, that looks simple. It's just a slender wing um, in the water, very, very little separation on it. But it's the fine, fine detail of that that makes a huge difference. Whereas we're, we're, making, we're making quite big changes to lots and lots of jaggedy bits rather than hyper-optimizing one very slender, <laughs> slender bit. Um, but but there's, there's, honestly, there's loads and loads of challenge in it up and down, up and down the boat. It's, I love that James just tight. referred to it as jaggedy bits. <laughs> I'm inspired by that. Brilliant. It means <coughs> I, can under I can understand it. Yeah. <laughs> <I> try. <laughs> um, so everyone here obviously sharing a, a common goal, which is to win the next uh, America's Cup campaign and bring it back to Britain where it all started. None are more keen to win it than the Royal Yacht Squadron. It is quite extraordinary that, um, to this day, the America's Cup is the oldest sporting trophy on the planet of any sport in any period of time. It's just such an enduring competition, which has moved so well with the times, yet is still full of twists and turns, intrigue, skullduggery, you name it, the America's Cup's got it. The role of the challenge of record is very important. Uh, it's a huge responsibility because it's the challenge of record who helps to shape uh, the next cup. So we're working at the moment very closely with Sir Ben and the team with our friends at Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron uh, to uh, ensure that the next cup will be as open as it possibly can with as many participants uh, as we can muster um, because that's what makes good competition. We were absolutely delighted when the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron proposed to us for this next cup for AC37, we would uh, be running a youth cup uh, event and a women's cup event as well, and, and we embraced that wholeheartedly. Uh, it's incredibly important uh, that we see a pathway and we create a pathway for young sailors coming up. We also need to address the balance of women in sailing, and it's something that, that we really want to see happen, and we're just delighted to be part of that historic beginnings of uh, a Women's America's Cup. This is a building just full of the most extraordinary paintings, books, artefacts from all walks of yachting. But there's one significant artefact that's still missing, the America's Cup. One thing the America's Cup has never been is fair. Toto, what are your sort of observations of it as a sporting contest in terms of parity? Because that has been an issue, a big one. <clears throat> well, I guess in every professional sport, um, when it becomes so uh, competitive um, and everybody's trying to maximize the rules in their own favor, it, you need a strong governance. And we have struggled at times in Formula One, um, to say the least. Uh, but then we stumbled upon the America's Cup um, rules, and they're even more um, complicated, to uh, call, call it that way. Um, and uh, the, the, the challengers have to uh, overcome a lot of obstacles in order to be actually competitive. But I guess this makes it so special. 
Well, there is that. Um, the Cup famous for its lack of fairness, Ben. So as challenger of record, how do we right that wrong? Do we, in fact, ever manage to do that? I mean, what, what are we going to do this time round that's going to be different from everything that's been before? Well, I mean, start off where we have a, we have a great relationship with Team New Zealand and with Grant, Grant Dalton, who, who runs that team. Um, and I think the, the challenge with the Cup is, you know, as we've said before, is that, you know, somebody wins it, it might be the same team again. Um, but then you put together a new set of regulations. And ultimately, long term, we need to try and get to a position where there is more neutral management of the game so that whoever wins it, there's more certainty where the cup is going, what type of boat you're racing in, so on and so forth. But you know, that, is, that is a big, big challenge to overcome the, the, the tradition of the cup and um, the, the deed of gift as it's known, which is what the, the cup rules are, are all based around. So it's a work in progress, really. But in this cycle, like I said, our, our cells working with the Kiwi, supporting them to come, to come together with a, a protocol that uh, you know, gives uh, enough time for the teams to prepare. Uh, you've already said we're going to stick with the, with the current class of boat. And we've had some initial discussions with some of the challenging teams or potential challenging teams about the modifications to the class rule, what people would like to see in that. So I think you know, this, the, the November, the mid-November deadline is really important for both ourselves and Team New Zealand to make that deadline so that the other teams know what the protocol is, what the set of rules are, and like I said, everyone can, can move forward and get cracking. How fair do we really want it to be, Jim? I mean, if we're talking about the future, I mean, we're talking about this cup now, but in the future, how fair do we want it to be? I mean, one of the things that Toto touched on there is that it does have this mystique and mystery about it. It's, it's sort of a yeah. unique <coughs> and unique proposition. It is it? slightly quirky because of the, <coughs> you know, the deed of gift of 200 years old and it doesn't have a governing body. So, <laughs> you know, you've got this very unique relationship between the defender and the challenger and, and they obviously can, can describe the event in, in very different ways if they choose to and they can sort of slightly... You know, I don't know what there's an expression, isn't there, but stack the cards a little bit in their favour if they wish. But I think the whole nature of sport should be, personally, I think, if it isn't a level playing field, then, you know, what have you achieved if you've won, really? I think, you know, broadly, I think, I think it, you know, we're sort of Brits, it should be a level playing field. And if Ben's going to win, he should, he should win on a level playing field. That's where I come from, really. Um, Bertie Bickett alluded to it in that VT as well. Um, the women's and the youth team, Ben, just to sort of expand on that a little bit because that's, that's a new thing too. Well, the youth team yeah. are completely... Yeah, we've had youth... From, actually, uh, we won the last Youth America's Cup in uh, AC35, so our, our young team. They did, Let's bring that they back. They did very well. Um, so they... they <laughs> yeah, 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 we need to do that. We, we need to learn a lesson from them in terms of winning the, the, the actual America's Cup. But no, I mean, joking aside, Youth America's Cup, Women's America's Cup is absolutely the right thing for the sport to grow and develop. And we're seeing that in other areas of the sport as well. And uh, very much support that. So looking forward to it. OK, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks for... Um just expanding on uh, the whole reasons for this, uh, this partnership working so well. We start another cup challenge, but not just as a, a team on the water, but also uh, uniting with a team very successful off it as well. We hope to see you next time. Thank you.